Atif wana shafo for ye mobi bi ara kwa ba edba sunko tv so sunko tv so de woni mse political news no nse ma hodo a ekoso wo gana ene ya de bro Atif wana se ye nyina ye beka ya eye gana ha afi we mu nse ma atrende wo gana ha pa ye ntimi nyi national cathedral nse em free Na enu ma asofo bi kra e resign free national cathedral board of trustees ne e ho nse bebre Na ya mem pani na na dodan kwa akufu ado emra na oye campaign no o se o she yankopon bo se se yankopon de tumi se ne nsa obesi eye asori dan e de ada ono twe dan pon yankopon ase Na sa national cathedral yi e ho asem apeja yi afi yi mu na edun mu na ayi eye mrache bejani aye fra no kennedy akompre ku e japon Ono nsuwa kasafa National Cathedral nse nse miyo huno. Na ya nse emra no mumi enti nse ma Kennedy akumpre kum a Japon e kanfa National Cathedral huno. Nse nebe kono subscribe to channel no na click notification bell no so. Uwi ya nsuwa no wa like, no wa share ama afufro na ono nsuwa tiye nse ma ekoso. Yenti Kennedy e Japon. Think about the economic benefits of the cathedral. Please, I happen the the Europeans, the Europeans are making money. Please, when he was talking, nobody shouted. Please, you see, we are all learning. When you go to Europe, most of the Catholic Church are giving money to their various cities. I happen to be in front with Honorable Esla, Strasbourg. The only two, when you go to Strasbourg, you will get a European Parliament. Apart from European Parliament, the only activities you see is around their Basilica, where they sell postcards, restaurants, tourists go there and spend money. When you go to Spain, Barcelona, Barcelona, if you take the airport, the second highest income Barcelona ends is from the Catholic Church called Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia. And look, I have been there three consecutive times, attempted to enter in Basilica and I did not get a chance. But even when I did not get a chance to enter, I spent about 89 euros buying postcards, whatever, over there. And my kids also went to the restaurant. So let us, don't let us think of only the amount that we are going to spend, but the long-term effect. Long-term effect. Look, when we go to uh, Belgium, the first place they take you to that they spent 100 years to build the Catholic Church. Okay? So, the import of what I'm saying is that we should look at the economic benefit too. My colleague was talking and the way he was arguing as if this is a crime. The long-term effect is not a crime at all. The amount involved here if we promote tourism, the amount we have here, 383 million dollars. If we promote tourism properly in this country, within five years, we'll recoup this money. So, members, I know the situation we are in, things are tough. No doubt about it. But let us also think of the economic benefits. Because if we take decisions short run, short run, short run, without long term effects, we will not get anywhere. That is my argument. When you go to Hamburg, Hamburg, you visit the Catholic Church, you will pay. You go to Cologne, you will pay. Even Cote d'Ivoire here, in February, what he built over there. So let us think of the long term effects. The benefits we are going to get out of this. And please, kindly don't let us be short sighted. And you're not a million, and you.
spent is too big. In the next five years, 380 million, what you recoup from this Catholic Church or Basilica or whatever you call it, trust me, it will help this country and it will promote tourism in Ghana. So let us think along those lines where we are going to make money and not only look at the amount here and say that is a crime. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Honourable Sam George. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, let me start by putting it on record that as an elder of a church and as a Bible-believing, we on this side are not against the building of a cathedral. However, Mr. Speaker, because we are Christians, we are not playing to the gallery. We are following the dictates of the Bible. And this is what the Bible we believe in says to us. In Luke 14, 28 to 30, is there anyone here planning to build a new house, in this case a cathedral, who doesn't first sit down to figure the cost so you know if you can complete it? If you only get the foundation laid, and Mr. Speaker, the Bible is so telling. The Bible in Uganda will have a president called Akufuadu. This is what he says. If you only get the foundation laid and then run out of money, you are going to look pretty foolish. Everyone passing by will poke fun at you. He started something he couldn't finish. This is the word of the Lord. Don't you look foolish because you have only laid a foundation and run out of money. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is not from George, this is the Bible. You don't go to church. You don't go to church. The Bible you go to church will, be, will be saddled with a president who will not calculate the cost of a cathedral. And we'll run out of Mr. Speaker, we have run out of money. People are walking by that place and poking fun at us and say, look at them, they are foolish. Yes. Not us, you. <laughs> and you sit here today and you tell me that unless we build a cathedral, we will not have God's blessings. Are you not the same people who say that we have been blessed by not having a civil war? Did we have a cathedral for us not to have a civil war? Look at the cathedrals that we have. I'm a member of the Perez Chapel International. Our cathedral seats 14,000 people. We are building a 5,000 seater cathedral. If 14,000 will not attack the blessings of God, you by LGBT people as they say, that will attack his blessings. <laughs> the minister sits there. The minister for works and housing is in this house. We are told reliably that the consultant got 34% of the value. The Minister for Works and Housing is here. He sets what consultancy limits must be. He has set it at 16%. So you sat in cabinet and watch your colleague minister pay a consultant 34%. Your ministry has set a standard and he has broken it, 16.5. And he has paid 34%. And you didn't advise him. And you tell us that it is God. And Mr. President, they tell us that if we refuse it, because the Himaya tried to build, we are somewhere and Tobias. Hey, wait. When they were building a temple, you forgotten that there was an Ananias and Sapphira. Name of God to steal. Stealing in the name of God. That is the scene of Ananias and Sapphira. Honorable member, Mr. Speaker. Honorable member, you have not laid evidence that anybody has stolen. Hey. Can they withdraw that? Can they withdraw that? Mr. Speaker, when I said stealing, I was making reference to Ananias and Sapphira, which I did earlier. You Ananias and Sapphira stole in the Bible. You said you are stealing in the name of God. Please, if you make reference to Sapphira, please properly reference it. Mr. Speaker, for, for, for the purposes of clarity, Ananias and Sapphira stole money for the church. And if today, we are seeing a disparity of 114 million. That is not being accounted for properly. Mr. Speaker, if this is not Ananias and Safira, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but Mr. Speaker, the most important thing for me here is 
I don't remember. That hold on. we will have. I don't remember. Hold on. Yes, honourable minister for what's in house. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I think the honourable member has referred to me in his response, and I think it's only fair that uh, I correct him. I think that he's misleading the house. Yes. Um, yes. You made a point that I set uh, the standard for for consulting uh, work for architects, but on this case. There is an exception to every rule. Yeah. Yeah. It should be entirely inaccurate to just say that without stating the exceptions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, continue. Mr. Speaker, we have the floor, please. Resume your seat. Don't know, continue. Please, he was on his feet. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy that the minister did not say that I lied when I said he set a standard of 16.5%. So, so when you say you gave exception, Mr. Speaker, I was expecting that because we, Eric Opoku told us we will all account before God on the judgment, I was expecting you to ask him to show you evidence of the exception that he gave in this case. You are lying. But, what were you referring to me about Eric Opoku? So that we will all account to God. Mr. Speaker, we will all account to God on judgment. Then what? And I was expecting that maybe you will ask him for evidence of the of the exception that he said. <laughs> and but, members, please, don't draw me into the argument. I have a totally different interpretation from what you're saying. That's right. If I was, I'll make a different argument. Now, I'm sitting here quietly. Very well, Mr. Speaker. Leave me out. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, like won't you smile it, you have washed your hands. <laughs> and I'm happy about that. But Mr. Speaker, our friends on the other side remind me of scripture again. Matthew 15, 8 to 9. Where the Bible says, these people, these people. Hello. Matthew 15, 8 to 9. The Bible says, These people, these people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, but their, te their teachings are merely human rules. The Bible knew we will have a majority like this. Peter Speaker, I will end by going back into the Bible. Mr. Speaker, the Bible, in the Bible, God calls only one man, a man after his own heart. And that man was David, a man after God's own heart. A man that the finance minister aspires to be like in vain. But you see, Mr. Speaker, even when David wanted to build a temple for God, a man, he called a man after his own heart. He said, you have blood on your hands. And for that sake, you cannot build me a temple. Put together the materials for the temple for his son. Mr. Speaker, I end by remembering the lost eight citizens who lost their lives in the 2020 elections. There is blood on their hand. Can we build a temple for God? Thank you very much. for a thing south. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the motion and to urge my colleagues on the other side that just as each and every one of them has taken their turn, made their submission so eloquently interspersed with scriptures and at the outset of their submissions each conceding and reiterating their position that they are not against the building of national cathedral mr speaker i wish to remind us all that the building of the national cathedral although in this country data has it 
that over 70 percent of the population are Christians and evidence abounds that this project is of utmost priority to these 70 percent Christians it is not just about Christians it goes far beyond that it goes far beyond a religious sense Mr. Speaker the chief imam of this country the venerable man has demonstrated utmost support for this project right at the outset, and that is of serious significance. Mr. Speaker, this debate has brought about the theological acumen and the biblical knowledge of my colleagues to the admiration of all of our, of our constituents. I am only a reverend minister. I am not a bishop, Mr. Speaker. If I were a bishop, I would have probably ordained as many as 20 members of parliament here, reverend ministers, by the end of this debate. But, Mr. Speaker, if there is any project that is... ...more unifying as a country, if there is any project that is speaking to the national cohesion of this country. If there's any project that is bridging the gaps of religious differences and bringing all hands on deck, it is the project of the National Cathedral. In the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, Mr. Speaker, the Lord said that you live in your luxurious houses your panel houses, whilst my house lies in ruins. Mr. Speaker, but again, the minority and our brothers on the other side have stated that they are not against the building of National Cathedral. So therefore, I proceed. My honorable brother attempted to give a clue of the building of a temple that was meant to be done by David, eventually. Mr. Speaker, Solomon started it. But the significance 